Hi, everybody. Chris Engelbert with Engelbert Financial Advisors in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And we've got the Engelbert angle today, and we're going to talk about what is estate planning. Now, before I get too far into this, we're going to give you a disclaimer. We are not attorneys. Uh, you need to consult with an attorney to get any, anything set up like a power of attorney, a will or a trust, etc. But what I want to do today is I want to talk about, you know, this big scary idea of estate planning and somebody says to you, well, you need to have an estate plan. You know, what does that really mean? Well, an estate plan can be as simple as having a will. And I beg you, I beg you, please, if you don't have a will, please walk quickly to get one. Uh, we had a situation this week where uh, a widow came in, and unfortunately in our business, we deal with that quite a bit. And you know, we went through all of her investments and what's going on. And she said, oh, by the way, just so you know, my husband died without a will. Now, this guy was a savvy businessman. You talk to him, you figure you knew what was going on. And he they did not have a will, which just blew my mind. So please make sure you at least have a simple will. And that's obviously estate planning right there. But you can also create complex trusts as well. Uh, I talked to another client who is going to be having a liquidity event, and they're doing the right thing by talking with an attorney that before they have this liquidity event and get these assets uh, uh, paid out to them, that they're going to set up a trust to take care of their kids and also to take care of something that if anything would happen to them in the future. So you can also have uh, very complex trusts or trusts can be very simple. Uh, but one of the things you want to do is talk to professionals. I can give you a good idea on how trust works, just the basics of them. Again, you need to consult with an attorney, but we have many clients who have set up trusts. We are managing the assets that happen to be in the, in the trust for them. And then upon their demise, which is a fancy way of saying when they die, what's going to happen with their assets? They have is obviously able to control that in a very good way. The other thing you want to talk about is gifting strategies while you're still alive. Too many times people with significant estates, and not even significant estates, I mean, if you are have a net worth of investable assets over $500,000 and your house is paid for and you have a couple of adult children, maybe it's time to start making some gifts to them, uh, obviously to help them along why they're still alive. In fact, there's a famous book out there called Having Zero Upon Death, where the author advocates making sure you literally give away all your money before you die. I don't know if that's such a good idea or not, because I don't know about you. I don't really know the timing about exactly when I'm going to die. So the question is, do you really want to give away all your assets? But it's an interesting concept. And people are looking at, at that more and more as they try to help their adult children. Why you need a will or a trust? Again, your heirs will thank you. Now, uh, I, I candidly, you know, you're going to be dead. So obviously, what do you care? But I can't tell you how many times we get adult children coming to us and they're like, we don't know what's going to happen. Mom, dad died without a will. We never got around to it. Uh, you know, they were afraid of attorneys. I mean, believe it or not, there's an old school belief out there where many people are like, hey, if I have, a, you know, if I have a will done, that means I'm going to die. Obviously, that's not the case. But again, what it really does is avoid a lot of confusion and stress. We have a book called Death in Dollars. Uh, if you're watching this video, contact us. We'd be more than happy to send it out. It basically tells you what happens when somebody dies and what happens to an estate. Uh, again, you have an orderly disposition of assets. Uh, you know, we see this all the time where we had another client come in and say, hey, my dad kept really good records. I know where everything is. That was not the case. The records were basically a handwritten piece of paper that said, hey, I have this account. I have this money here. Well, when we went to find it, um, you know, the handwritten records were over 15 years old and a lot of the money was gone. Um, the other thing that happens is that it also avoids questions about your intention. So we see this happen all the time in families where, hey, dad said that I'm going to get all the firearms in the family and mom said I'm going to get all the jewelry in the family. Well, guess what? If you don't have this stuff written down, it can cause a lot of stress and confusion for your kids when they go to dispose of these assets. Uh, make sure 
significant assets are in the will. And then obviously you have some handwritten direction or not even handwritten, but you have some direction as to what happens with the rest of your assets. So it avoids confusion. The other thing you want to do is make sure that everyone knows where the original copy of the will is, whether it's a safe deposit box, better yet, fireproof safe at your home. Uh, and also what we do for many of our clients is we scan their will or trusts and we have it in the cloud attached to their name. Obviously, it's very secure. We're big on cybersecurity, but that's a whole nother video. Again, make sure it's updated. If you have any life changing events, we see this all the time where uh, a husband and wife, the husband or the wife passes away and the wife or husband forgets to update the will now that they're the only one left. You've got to update these things uh, on a regular basis. So again, the thing that we see over and over again is, you know, we, we as investment advisors have gone through this many, many times, unfortunately. But again, we see a lot of confusion out there. We see a lot of misinformation where people are like, oh man, I'm going to have to pay a lot in taxes. No, not necessarily. Depending upon what the assets are, you may not have to pay any money in taxes, but there's caveats there as well. Um, the, the thing that we really have to have people understand is that when someone dies, typically the majority of their assets go into an estate account and the estate, which is a totally different entity, pays the inheritance tax or the estate tax before the final distribution is done uh, to the ultimate people that are going to be getting the money. Uh, again, there's also a lot of false expectations. We've had very simple estates, meaning all their money happens to be held at one custodian. They typically take anywhere from nine months to a year. If you have real estate, multiple real estate assets or a small business somewhere, uh, that could end up taking up to two to possibly three years when you're dealing with having to sell a house in Florida and you live in Pennsylvania, et cetera. The other thing that's very important is a lot of people are unsure about how inherited IRAs work and inherited Roth IRAs. If you run into that situation or you're talking to your parents and they have large IRAs and they're like, hey, you're going to be the beneficiaries of this. Make sure you understand what happens with the inherited IRAs. The laws have changed in the last couple of years. So again, to recap, form a team. You need your financial advisor. Uh, you need an attorney. If you don't have a CPA, I would even include them in on it uh, because as a team, we work together and we talk about, hey, here's what we need to do for this particular client to get the assets in the right place. Determine what the goals are. Your end, end game is don't delay. So while you're alive now, make sure you get a will and possibly a trust depending upon when you sit down with your attorney. I always tell people when they go to see an attorney, Make sure you have a list of where all of your assets are and what names those assets are in. Are they in individual names? Are they in joint names? Also list on your IRAs, et cetera. So that gives the attorney a better uh, idea as far as what you own and who owns it. The other thing you have to be careful of is sometimes this happens is an attorney will talk to you about set, setting up in a will and he'll be like, well, if this happens, what do you want to have? Or if this happens, what do you want to do? And sometimes people get, get analysis paralysis and they don't follow through with any of it. I can't tell you how many attorneys I've talked to. And so, one attorney said fully 30% of all the wills he drafts never get signed because people at the last minute are like, they throw up their hands and they're like, oh, I don't know what happens if both of us dies, who gets this, et cetera have some type of will. Again, communication is the key as far as make sure you're starting to talk to your adult children about, hey, do you have a will? Where's mom and dad's will? What's going to happen to the assets after the will? Again, we're trying to not have the stigma but, uh, where uh, in many previous generations, it was forbidden to talk about how much money mom and dad had and where their money was. That's not the way it is nowadays. Clear communication will serve you very well in the future uh, and avoid a lot of confusion out there when it comes to estate planning. Estate planning is not scary. Just make sure you get the right team in place and eventually your children will be very grateful. That's all we have for this week's Engelbert Angle. We'll be back soon. Take care and talk to you.